Welcome to a new episode of Let's Code a Linux Network Driver. So, in my last video I've shown you how we can transmit frames in a Linux Network Driver, but unfortunately I made some errors. So in today's video I want to fix these errors and explain them to you and I also didn't give you any proof that frames were actually transmitted over my setup. So, I will ch so here I have a small setup to demonstrate to you that transmitting of the frame is actually working. Yeah, so that's the content of today's video. So here I am connected to my Raspberry Pi over SSH and I'm in the folder of my simple SBI Ethernet device, the set device. And let me open up the driver source code and let's recap what we did last time. So what we basically did was we have created a new function set send and this function we have also added to the network device operations. So every time the Linux kernel wants to send an Ethernet frame over the set device it will call the set send function. And in this function we basically just stop the transmitting queue because our set device can only handle one Ethernet frame at a time. Then we have added the frame to be sent, which is bundled in this struct SK buff or scatter buffer. We have added this to the um, data for our set device. And as this function is called in an atomic context, we have used a work item to start, yeah, to start a new working item, which takes care of transceiving the frame from the hopper side. And this work item calls the following function. It calls the function set hardware xmit and in the hardware xmit function we basically handle how the frame is sent to the set device by communicating over the SBI bus. Okay, so what are we doing here? So one thing we have to do here in this hardware xmit function is we in case the frame we want to send is smaller then the minimum Ethernet frame size we have to pet the frame. And this is basically what we are doing here. So in this case we I have declared a short packet buffer with the size of Ethernet set length. And here in case the length is smaller than 64, which is the minimum size allowed for an Ethernet frame, I am um, setting the short package buffer to all zeros. I'm copying over the um, data from the scatter buffer and then I'm setting the length and the data correctly here. But here I had a misunderstanding. So the problem is Ethernet set length is not equal to 64 and I will explain to you why. But therefore we have to check how an Ethernet frame in layer 2 looks like. And here you can see how it looks like. So first we have a preamble, we have a destination MAC address, a source MAC address, we have a type or a length field which is 2 bytes in size and then we have a variable data field which can be 46 to um, 1500 bytes. And in layer 2 we have no preamble so we have 6 plus 6 plus 2 plus 46 plus 4 bytes which is 64 bytes. But the problem is this last field here is a checksum. So the purpose of this checksum is so that the receiver of the frame can verify if the frame was sent correctly. So it will calculate the checksum over the destination, MAC, source, MAC type and data and then it will compare the calculated value with the CRC value which was sent to the device. And in case this matches the receiver knows okay transmitting of the frame works successfully, but if it doesn't, we know an error occurred on the transmission line. But the problem is, this CRC here is not included in the frame which is passed to the Linux kernel because it's calculated by the set device in hardware. Therefore, the minimum allowed frame size is no longer 64. No, it's 64 minus 4 bytes equals 60 bytes. So. And what the error here is, in case this short package, or in case we have a frame with 62 bytes for example, 62 is smaller than 64, this memset will work, but then here 
we want to copy 62 bytes to a buffer which is only 60 bytes in size. So here we have to change this to Ethernet ZLAN and then this error will not occur any longer because this error would corrupt our stack and we will get a kernel panic when receiving a package which is between 60 bytes in size and 64 bytes in size. Okay, and there are some other things we can do better. For example, here we are locking our mutex and then we are writing to the SPI bus. Then, in case everything worked, we are printing something to the kernel's lock and then we are unlocking the mutex. And writing to the kernel's lock takes time and this doesn't have to be here within the mutex lock context in this critical section. So let's delete these three lines here and copy them below the unlocking of the mutex. Because in, we want to stay only as short in the critical section as possible. And the last thing I forgot is, when the Linux kernel calls this setSend function, it has dynamically allocated memory for this getter buffer with the frame content. And of course, if something is dynamically allocated, we have to free it at the end. And this is also something I have missed here. So the last thing before leaving the set hardware xmit function is, I will call def k3 skb to free my um, scatter buffer, which was allocated dynamically. Tx skb. Okay. Good, and that should have been all the mistakes I made. Let's try to compile this driver and then let's try to test it. And while this is compiling, let me explain my setup to you. So here we have a Raspberry Pi, which is connected to my set device over SSH. And my set device is connected to an evaluation board for an Ethernet transceiver from Texas Instruments. And basically, what this evaluation board this, so this evaluation board has an uh, um, Ethernet transceiver or an Ethernet file on it. And here on these pin headers we have the media independent interface, the MII interface, which would be normally connected to the processor or to the Mac at least. And what I've done here is I have connected a logic analyzer to the RX pins of the MII. So when the set device is sending a frame we should first see the link activity LED toggling and what we should also see is some activity on the data pins here. But before we test this, I've made a, I have a typo here, which I should fix. So the function here is called def k3 under skb, of course. Good, then let's try to compile this program again. And while this is compiling, here you can see my logic analyzer over which I want to record the package which was um, received by the TI Ethernet Transceiver Evaluation Board. And therefore I've connected the logic analyzer to four pi six pins of the MII interface. The RX clock, RX data valid tells us when we have a valid frame and RX0, RX1, RX2 and RX4 are four bytes of the received data. So let's start the logic analyzer here. Okay, now before everything compiled successfully. So what I can do is I can load the device tree overlay to add the set device and then I can um, insert my driver. And now watch out for the link activity LED here. So you can see the LED is now blinking because our set device is transmitting frames. And when we take a look at the logic analyzer, you can see it was triggered. So for example here, here we have a valid frame. So this is what Rx data valid shows us. And these are the data which were transmitted by the frame. And here at the start we have a second frame. So when data valid is true, we have well, at frame data here, and here we can see the data of the frame. So our set device is actually sending data. Okay, so I guess that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something, and sorry again for the mistakes. If you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash for Linux. So thanks for watching, and goodbye.